Malaysia has a rotational monarchy. Huh? So what this means is that the nine rulers, or better known as the sultans, of these states take turns to be the king or the young Dipertuan Agong. While in office, he, yes, the Agong is always a man, stays at the National Palace in the capital KL. And the term is for five years. There is an established order as to who becomes king next. Now, even though the next in line is known, the monarch-to-be still needs the majority approval of the rest of the sultans, who form the conference of rulers through a secret ballot. The other four Malaysian states, former British protectorates, have no hereditary rulers and are led by governors. Typically, the monarchs in other countries like the UK remain in office throughout their life. The crown is only passed down through the bloodline when the monarch dies or abdicates the throne. But for Malaysia, the Agong may resign, as the 15th king did when he stepped down unexpectedly in 2019. He could also be removed from office by the Conference of Rulers, but so far, this hasn't happened yet. Now, all this can take place before the five-year term ends. Also, because of the rotational system, one sultan may serve twice as king, if he lives long enough, or may never serve at all. And Malaysia has never had a female agong with a constitution specifically referring to the monarch as a male. While his role may be largely ceremonial, being king does come with some special functions and privileges enshrined in the constitution. He has the power to appoint a prime minister whom he believes can command a majority among the lawmakers. While rarely used, that power has been exercised multiple times because of the political instability in the country. The Agong stepped in when then Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad resigned because of coalition infighting in 2020. After extensive interviews with all lawmakers, he decided on Dr Mahathir's former ally Muhyiddin Yassin to be Premier. 17 months later, the Agong intervened again when Mr Muhyiddin's own coalition collapsed, picking Ismail Sabri Yaakob as the successor. His most recent intervention came after the 2022 general election when it resulted in a hung parliament, eventually appointing Anwar Ibrahim as Prime Minister. The king also has the power to proclaim an emergency, which he recently exercised in 2021 in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. He has the power to refuse the Prime Minister's request to dissolve the Parliament. Plus, the Agong can sign off on laws and appoint ministers and their deputies, court judges and other key roles at the national level. This is on the advice of the Prime Minister. He has the power to pardon convicted people. Possibly the most notable example was when the previous king pardoned current PM Anwar in 2018, who was then imprisoned on sodomy and corruption charges. The Agong is also the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, in addition to being the steward of the country's main religion, Islam. 